It's the Real Estate Podcast, brought to you by ANZ Home Loans for financial well-beings. And welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Breakfast, available on iHeartRadio every morning and on Spotify and Apple and, of course, wherever you get your podcast from. Well, I hope that you are enjoying your weekend, whatever you're doing, maybe finishing off some of those final touches, the odd jobs around the house on the Sunday morning, which is the 5th. 15th day of January for 2023 and it might be your last day for your holidays today if that is the case enjoy today if you're going back to work for the first time tomorrow for 2023 and if you were in Melbourne yesterday she was a crackling hot sticky day and we'll have a look at that weather forecast for you in just a moment coming up as promised uh, we're going to be talking tiny homes as the summer series Time Tunnel continues, a few revealing factors too that I had no idea about within the tiny home world environment. Of course, the prices, they have increased for tiny homes like everything else has over the last 12 months. And we'll talk about uh, the price point and what you get for your dollar with tiny homes. If you're celebrating your birthday today for January the 15th, Uh, Happy birthday, Pitbull, the rapper, is turning 41. It would have been Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday today. Incidentally, he would have been 93. And it was on this day back in 1973 that President Nixon ordered a ceasefire in the long overdue ceasefire in Vietnam. Informing you every morning from 6.30 with the latest real estate property news seven days a week only on The Real Estate Breakfast. It's the main centre forecast with PRD, selling smarter every day. All right, on this Sunday morning, let's have a look at your weather around Australia. And first we go to Sydney. Good morning to you, expecting blue skies and a top temperature of 21 degrees. Melbourne, you get a bit of a breather today. A lot of cloud cover is going to keep the mercury down to just 22 after the scorcher yesterday. Brisbane expecting a partly cloudy day but mostly fine. 29 is your forecast high and in Perth expecting plenty of sunshine and your high of 32. We are just as addicted to property as you are. Every weekday morning from 6.30. Well, tiny home living, when it first started to happen, I think a lot of people didn't really see it taking off the way that it has. And I think for many people, they probably thought that it was filling a need for people that were a little bit hippie-ish, perhaps, and alternative. But that couldn't be further from the truth. It's grown to unprecedented levels with costs of living pressures. So what is going on? Well, let's talk to Faye Barry. She knows a thing or two about tiny homes. And a very good morning to you, Faye. Welcome to the Real Estate Podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. You know a thing or two about these tiny homes because you've been running these expos around the country. Perhaps before we get into the expos, what made you get into this whole tiny home movement? Oh, I think I first came across them quite a long time ago and didn't think too much of them at the time. But um, I did work for an expo company and I pitched the idea to my boss of doing a tiny home expo. And he giggled a little bit and said, oh, it sounds like a cool little hippie show. Well, of course, as you just said, it's it's not a hippie show anymore. It's incredibly mainstream. And we launched in October of last year following a few COVID setbacks. And we've now done three and about to do our fourth. So tell us a little bit about the Melbourne Expo, because I think you got 12,000 people along to your expo in Melbourne. I mean, that's quite a lot of people. Yeah, especially considering the weather as well. We had difficult weather in Melbourne, um, but I'm not at all surprised. The biggest problem we have is trying to keep the crowds down. We have a staggered um, entry system because um, otherwise people are just queuing to try and get in to see the homes on the inside. And um, the expo is actually is is in danger of imploding under its own popularity. That's how popular tiny homes are. And what about the construction of these, Faye? Because they do vary. Tell us a little bit about the different builds. Right. Well, there's the quintessential tiny home, which is the pretty tiny home, which is on wheels. But they also come on skids in the form of shipping containers and modulars. 
At the Melbourne Expo, we also had well um, wagons there, you know, like gypsy wagons or Vardy as they are called. Then there's just backyard pods um, in all kinds of different shapes. In fact, in Melbourne, we probably had the most diversity that I've ever seen of any of any get together of any tiny homes ever. I was reading about the prices because the prices have really taken off in terms of building these. I think I read somewhere where it's gone up in the magnitude of something like 50% over a period of time. So what can you tell us about that? Without a doubt, the tiny home industry, just like the normal building industry, is being hit by the increase in materials that the builders use. So that has definitely had a lot to do with it. And more and more people are getting um, into the tiny home building, but people want real luxury items. And one of the desires with tiny homes is people really like to build them to their exact whims. And with that comes a lot of luxury items. The other side of things that has put the price of tiny homes, I feel, into a higher bracket is the need for them to be completely off grid. So you can put them in the back of your dwelling where you would be able to fix them to your sewerage and to your power, et cetera. But more ideally is to be able to put them wherever you want. So a completely off-grid home is going to set you back an extra twenty dollars to $25,000 for solar and sewerage and grey water systems, et cetera. So that really does help with pushing the prices up. But most of all, I would say it's the luxury additions. People would like baths and nice fittings and really lu- luxurious finishes on their homes. Did you say that people want baths in them? Absolutely. We've got them with baths. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> and walk-in closets. <laughs> wow. Okay. Because I was reading about just how small they go because they go right down to 10 square metres, right? Absolutely. They, um, so at the, um, at the show, we had a prototype for a housing solution that would be under $20,000, I believe, and they would be as small as just three or four metres by 2.5 metres. Generally, they are only 2.5 metres wide, but they can go as far as three metres wide. Of course, that changes the rules on towing. So if you were going to be towing quite a lot on the roads, you'd probably stick with the 2.5 metre wide one. And then they go all the way up to 11 metres long, which is, which is huge. So we've got teeny tiny ones and extremely large tiny ones. What about the, the builds where you can pull it out, you know, at the sides? Are there any tiny homes that are designed like that? Um, I have seen them. They're at our Brisbane show. They've had a few issues, I believe. You've got to look into insulation and leakage with some of them. So it really does depend on the builder with those ones. They're called expandables. So they haven't been as popular as yet, but I believe that there's quite a few good quality ones coming out now. So we, we think we're going to be seeing a lot more of those. And a cheap one, it's quoted at around $70,000. So if somebody's looking at this as an alternative, what would seventy grand get you? It would get you a really nice house, actually. $70,000 would maybe um, about six to seven metres long by 2.5. You would have your bedroom, your kitchen and your bathroom in a, in a house of that price. I think the, it's the off-the-grid elements and the luxury items that would start pushing it up nearer to um, 100000 with some of the larger ones, for instance, um, a double loft, which has got two bedrooms, both of them usually upstairs, then those ones would go into about a hundred to a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Wow. Okay. And how many square meters is the seventy thousand dollar one? Um, I think you've got me there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I haven't got it. I have to sit at my computer to have these things. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, it's it's bigger than ten square meters, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's um, about 7.2 metres by 2.5. Now, talking about off the grid and somebody that wants to hook it up to power in the sewerage, in terms of council approval for doing that, what's required? Council approval is an ongoing discussion. At the end of the day, they're not defined tiny homes, so they just fall under the category of a, of a caravan. So they're exactly the same as if you bought your caravan home and and popped it on your land. There are that in your area, there may be issues with staying in that caravan for a length of time. Um, and different councils have very different rules in regards to that. Across the country, everything is a bit different. There are organisations that are pushing for change, including Tiny Homes Expo. We feel that with the housing crisis, floods, bushfires and everything that's going on in the country at the moment, and mainly affordability as well, that there is a place for these. If the councils can work with tiny home people and people that want to live in them, I think they're a really good solution for a lot of people. 
Yeah, no doubt, because, I mean, the amount of growth in this area has been exponential, really. If you look at some of these sites, these Facebook sites, etc., there's a lot of photos being shared, a lot of people with tiny homes. Absolutely. I think I've been quoted as saying that when I first looked into doing the expo, I could only find 37 builders and um, I've now got hundreds of them on my books and they're very busy. I'll give you an idea. One, um, a very popular builder is currently sitting on a 15 month waiting list and that's not unusual. Wow. Okay. So it might be tiny, but it's big in growth. Hey, thank you so much, Faye, for jumping onto the Real Estate Podcast and giving us a little bit of a breakdown. When's your next expo coming up? Oh, we're getting ready right now for a North Brisbane Expo. It's at Redcliffe Showgrounds and it will be on the 27th to the 29th of May. Well, good luck with that. And thanks for coming onto the program. Thank you very much. We connect you to the best real estate information across Australia. The Real Estate Podcast.